If you've ever wanted to play Dark Souls on the go, now's your chance with Clicker Souls. Collect and level up all your favorite heroes, fight all the bosses from Dark Souls, and obtain more souls than your friends. Download it now for free on the App Store and Google Play. We're back with another Dark Souls Hearthstone video. The last one did really well, and a butt ton of you guys wanted to see another one featuring the cards that got left out of the previous video, so here we are. If you haven't watched my first video, it'll be down in the description. I highly recommend checking that one out before jumping into this one. But without further ado, here are 10 more Souls-related cards done in a Hearthstone style. I also read all of your guys' ideas from the last comment section, so if you have any card ideas or ways to improve on mine, be sure to leave them down below, lads. Jumping in with one of our favorite NPCs in the franchise, Blacksmith Andre was the go-to smith in Dark Souls 1 and 3. He was all about upgrading equipment and making your weapons better, so I took that idea and made him a 3 mana, 2-4 with the text, add plus 1, plus 1 to your weapon at the end of your turn. Since the last video, I've been playing a lot more Hearthstone, and I've noticed a certain pirate warrior dominating the ladder, and I would think this would fit in pretty damn well with that deck. I also thought of giving him an Enrage feature as well to support the way if he's attacked in Dark Souls he'll straight up beat the living shit out of you with his fists. So that's probably something I could add to this card, make it a little more expensive, but I don't know. I, I, like, the I like the simplicity of this one. If we're going to have a Capra Demon card, there's no doubt in my mind it'd have to come with his two hounds. This idea was suggested by at Kyle the Derp on Twitter. Jesus. He's a 5 mana 4-4 demon with the battle cry. Summon 2, 2-1 two hounds with charge. There's not a whole lot more to say about this one. If I wanted to add something completely wacky to this card, it'd be text that made the actual arena like two cards smaller on the sides, which would go really well with his shitty little fighting space in Dark Souls, but this has never been seen before and I wouldn't really know how it would work. If it like, if you have a full board already, maybe it would destroy the cards on the outside, but that would require a lot of tweaking. Um, so he's a pretty standard legendary card, but he looks fucking badass. Yol of Londor was a card suggested by at Jason General on Twitter. We've seen a lot of expensive high mana card bosses in the previous video, so I thought this one would be more focused on the budget cards. He's a two mana, one two with stealth, and the text, at the end of your turn, give a friendly minion plus two attack. After five turns, destroy this minion. I had to use Jace's idea because it fits Yol perfectly. The way he can improve your character in Dark Souls 3 at the eventual cost of his life translates into a Hearthstone card incredibly well. Kind of reminds me of that Warlock Imp that has stealth and dishes out a little bit of health each turn, but instead this will deal out attack and it will die after five turns. This card is perfect for buffing other minions on the board, but is pretty useless without the help. So an interesting idea that my boy Marcus, also known as Epic Name Bro, actually suggested was equipment for minions make its way into the game. We already see this a little bit with the spare parts that are currently in Hearthstone, but I really like the idea of equipping minions with things like rings. I went through a butt ton of different rings that won't make it into this video, but I thought I'd show off the Leo ring for an example. When you equip it onto a minion, the minion's attack will double, but only when being attacked. In Dark Souls, the Leo ring boosts your counter attack, so I thought this was the best way to convey that in a card game. It's also a pretty unique unique idea if you have a lower attack torn up and put the Leo ring on him, all of a sudden his attack is doubled when being attacked, which means he could dish out some pretty serious damage to attackers. Here's a card I teased on Twitter, one of the worst and easiest bosses in Dark Souls is finally here. The son of a bitch is Pinwheel. He's a 5 mana 2-3 with the death rattle, give the owner all three of the family masks. When we think of the actual boss fight of Pinwheel, he doesn't have high attack or high health, and the only reason people care about his existence is for his sweet ass masks. The three masks are spells based on what they give in Dark Souls. Mask of the Child gives you stamina regeneration, so in Hearthstone I made it a zero mana spell that gives you two mana crystals back this turn. The Mask of the Mother increases your health in Dark Souls, so the card version naturally is a one mana spell that restores five health to a minion or hero. And lastly, the Mask of the Father increases your maximum load in the game, so I made it let you draw two cards. These are all really powerful spells for their cost, but require your pinwheel to die without being silenced or removed in some other way. Love to hear your guys' ideas on what you think the mask could do for you, or how you'd change it, and uh, make them relate more to the ones in Dark Souls. Now don't worry, I've heard your cries for Dark Souls 2 bosses, and we have two of them a little later on in this list, but for now, let's tackle one of my favorite bosses from Dark Souls 3, Pontiff Sullivan. Apart from being just an absolute relentless cunt, 
In his phase two, he'll summon a cloned version of himself, which will do his exact same moves straight after him. So I've made him a six mana four five with the battle cry summon a phantom clone, which is a three three that cannot attack, but will mimic all of Pontiff Sullivan's attacks. This would also work with Bran Bronzebeard, meaning you could get two Phantom Clones. Although if Pontiff is destroyed off, then you're stuck with a useless 3-3 on the board that the enemy might ignore completely. On the opposite end of the scale, if Pontiff isn't strong enough to end something off, his clone will take care of it right after. The stupid son of a fucking bitch. Fuck you, Pontiff. <laughs> So I haven't had much of a chance to make any weapons, and as far as weapons go, this isn't all that exciting, but I like the idea of it regardless. This is the Shodal, which in the Souls franchise will ignore the shield and do damage anyway. Naturally, this is a 5 mana 4-2 weapon that can completely ignore taunts. I actually made this way before knowing that Pirate Warrior was a thing, but looking at it now, I just realize how well this would go with that deck. Maybe put it alongside Blacksmith Andre and just go to town on anything hiding behind big taunts. There's not really an ignore taunt feature in Hearthstone as far as I know, so it could be an interesting feature for certain cards. So I've got a few more cards to discuss in this video, and yeah, these, are the, these are for you Dark Souls 2 fans out there. And this specific one is for those of you who are sick of being overrun by zoo or aggro decks. This is the Royal Rat Vanguard, a 3 mana 1-1 which fills your board with 1-1 one, one Plagued Rats. You can think of it almost as a really terrible, cheap Anixia, but those Plagued Rats are all 1-1 one, one Taunts. Putting a complete stop to the piece of work opponent who is trying to rush you down in a few turns. If you remember the Vanguard from Dark Souls 2, you'll remember you're overrun by a butt ton of rats that are all guarding their king with their bodies. You also recall that there's no summons allowed in this fight, so this could almost be represented in the fact that you can't summon any more of your minions on the board after this is summoned, because the board will just be full of 1-1s. One this could have some good synergy with board buffing cards, but mainly, I just wanted to give a big fuck you to the zoo deck. This is one last normal enemy from the Souls franchise I'd hate to leave out of having his own card is the Bone Will Skeleton. In Dark Souls, they're focused on being on the offense, and god damn it, they're good at it. If they're rolling at you, there's not a lot you can do to stop them. But if they're a mobile, they're all of a sudden pretty trash and can be taken out easily. I took that idea and made it a 5 mana 4 2 with charge and immune while attacking. This is an excellent way to take out minions and have the opponent be forced to remove the Bone Will themselves. Although they can be removed pretty quickly and. Unless you hide it behind like a taunt, or you buff it, unless your opponent has a shoulder. Am I right boys? Cool back. This is also an undead card, so this could be played with the Gravelord Nido deck I mentioned in my last video. So last but by no means least is an insane card based on our favorite Dark Souls 2 boss that won't leave you the fuck alone, the Pursuer. In Scholar of the First Sin, the Pursuer will just randomly show up in all sorts of locations and be a right pain in the ass throughout the game. You don't get to choose when you fight him after the initial fight, he'll just come and get you any pleases. I know technically his fights are not random, I get it, alright, I know. So I took that idea and the fact that people just love RNG in Hearthstone and made him a 5-3. And he has the text, cannot be played but he will randomly enter the board at the start of your turn up to four times a game. This means he can show up on turn one, turn two, and turn three in a row, and your opponent will just concede. Or maybe he turns up once in the game right at the end when you need him. Or maybe he just doesn't turn up at all. He also doesn't need to be in your hand, he just has to be in your deck to appear on the board, so you do not control when the Pursuer enters combat, only he can do that. But if RNG is kind, he'll make you win the game with his entrances. This card is absolutely whack, and I love it. These are the kind of ideas that are the reason I love doing this so much. So thank you for watching, everybody. I still have enough ideas for maybe one more video, but again, I'll let you guys decide whether that happens or not. And to make another full-fledged video, I probably need a few more of your guys' ideas, to be honest. So leave them down below, make some cards, go nuts, boys. And of course, thank you to all my Patreon supporters again. I've revamped it completely. There's only three tiers now, and I've streamlined it all to the $5 tier. So if you enjoy my content enough to want to support it for the cost of a coffee a month, please consider it. $5 can go a long way, my friend. Now here's some shocking news. My next video will not be about Dark Souls. I'm really getting burnt out on Souls right now. And honestly, I don't even play any Souls-related games right now. I just have no interest in it. Although my next video will be another waifu video. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know what, what it's gonna be. So get just be prepared for me losing my sanity again about a different franchise. I wanna be able to talk about games that I love and games that I, I am playing and if I keep doing souls, I'm just gonna f 
fucking crash hardcore because I just I don't need things to talk about because I'm an entertainer first you know I'm not talking about lore or anything I'm not doing gameplay or anything I can talk about fucking rocks I can talk about anything it comes to a point where uh, I can't do it any any longer so I want to talk about dumb stuff in other games why can't I do top 10 rocks in Final Fantasy you know so prepare for that uh, I hope you guys stick around and watch those things anyway uh, regardless of that I'm not moving away from souls there's still gonna be souls videos of course uh, that's you know still I still love Dark Souls but I'm just letting you guys know so until next time this this Yo Windy Mouth signing out bitch Psst.